So, are the personality disorders that are found in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders gender biased? Some people think so, arguing that our ideas about socialized gender roles influence the ways in which we decide whose personality is or isn't quote-unquote normal. Both histrionic and borderline personality disorder diagnoses are more commonly made in females than males, and some say that this is because these diagnoses are both characterized by excessive emotionality. People who are diagnosed with histrionic personality disorder seem overly dramatic and superficial. They're prone to exaggerated emotional displays that other people find kind of over the top. On the other hand, people diagnosed with borderline personality disorder show abrupt emotional shifts in response to desperate efforts to avoid real or perceived abandonment by others. Critics say both these diagnoses unfairly target women who are socialized to express feelings to a much greater extent than men are. Seeing women who display strong emotions as disordered has a long and troublesome history. What we now refer to as being histrionic used to be referred to as being hysterical. This goes all the way back to ancient Greek medicine, which saw symptoms involving emotionality in women as caused by, believe it or not, a wandering womb. This early biological explanation wasn't just wrong, many contended also reeked of sexism. Histrionic and borderline aren't the only personality disorders that have been criticized as sexist. Dependent personality is another diagnosis that comes in for such criticism. It's characterized by being needy, clingy, and generally dependent on other people. However, critics say this diagnosis inappropriately pathologizes women who have been socialized to behave in a different way. And critics see their different and accommodating behavior as signs of socialization rather than as signs of disorder. Feminist critics argue that women behaving dependently can be much better explained in social terms. After all, in many contexts and cultures, women lack socioeconomic equality and so they are, quite literally, dependent on men. But when their understandable feelings of helplessness come out in displays of emotional distress, they get improperly labeled as mentally ill. Critics argue that women's distress in such cases is mistakenly viewed as a disorder attributable to the women themselves instead of being more appropriately attributed to socially oppressive gender norms. Nearly 40 years ago, Psychologist Marcy Kaplan made the point that personality disorders are sexist, and she did this by proposing, in somewhat of a tongue-in-cheek fashion, two fictional personality disorders that describe stereotypically male personality styles. She described the first one, which she called independent personality disorder, as being characterized by putting work above relationships and not considering others when making decisions. She described the second, which she called restrictive personality disorder, is involving excessive emotional restraint and avoidance, interpersonal avoidance. Kaplan's point here was that these behaviors aren't identified as disorders because people tend to treat male ways of being and behaving as the norm. And so being overly independent, unemotional, and preoccupied with work and career are valued in our society. They're treated as normal. And the, they're the unfair standard against which women we're often socialized to not be these ways as much as men, are often judged. Now, does research support the notion that personality disorders are gender biased? It might. Some, but not all, studies have found evidence of gender bias in how personality disorders are diagnosed. In studies where gender bias has been found, men tend to be more often diagnosed as paranoid, schizoid, schizotypal, antisocial, narcissistic, and obsessive compulsive whereas women tend to receive dependent, histrionic, and borderline personality disorder diagnoses. If there are gender differences in rates of personality disorder, why do these differences occur? Is it because these diagnoses are scientifically invalid and rooted in sexist ideas about gender roles? Or are personality disorders valid diagnoses, but ones where we need to reduce bias in making them? Debate over this issue continues. What do you think?